choice. Okay. We are? Hello everyone, welcome to Trail Talk. I am Miss Mary and we are here live at Duncan at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. We are of course in our Chuck Wagon Theater and we have a special guest that is going to come and speak to us today. She's going, or he or she, I'm sorry, our guest is going to give us a little bit of a story, if you will, because this person had a very exciting life out on the trail. So we are going to get to listen to this person today, share their life. So I'm going to right now welcome Willie Matthews. Ooh. Hey everybody. Hi Miss Willie. How are you doing? Good. Well, good. All right. I'm going to step aside and I'm going to let you share your life history. All right. All right. That sounds great. Thank you. Well, I'm going to tell you a story about a cattle drive that started in 1888. Now, this drive was headed north up to Wyoming, and the trail boss's name was Samuel Houston. So, Mr. Houston pulled into Clayton without the herd. You see, he was in need of some help. He had recently endured a stampede that had lasted seven full hours. He was bringing about 2,500 cattle north, and he was short some hands. He had gone into a town to tend to some business, and when he got back, four of the cowboys had the other cowboys held at gunpoint. So he took out his weapon, collected theirs, and sent them on their way. So Mr. Houston needed some help. Well, he went to Clayton and found a friend he had who lived there and asked him if he knew of anybody who was looking for work. Well, so happened there'd been a kid in town. A kid who was young, but was looking to get a, a job on a cattle drive. Mr. Houston found that kid over at the stables and he hired him on the spot. The kid was real anxious to go to work. So Mr. Houston took him on out to meet the other cowboys and the kid got the job as the wrangler. That means he was in charge of all the extra horses, you know, the Ramuda. The fellow who was the Wrangler before got promoted up to be a regular cowboy now. Well, the kid was a hard worker. Harder than most, in fact. On the stormiest of nights, he wasn't afraid of a thing. He'd be the first one up off his bedroll on his horse and out there tending to those cattle. Sometimes you could hear him singing real softly trying to calm them down. Well, uh, the kid had a great attitude. And besides working hard, he didn't use cuss words and he didn't use tobacco. And he, everybody really liked him. Uh, the kid was about 19 years old and well, Mr. Houston was often heard making a comment that he wished he had three or four more just like him. So about four months into the drive, Mr. Houston decided it was time to take a day off. So he found a nice spot for them to kind of build camp and, and take a day off. About noon that day, the kid ran right up to Mr. Houston and he said, I, I just can't take this anymore. I am too homesick. I need to go back home. Mr. Houston, would you let me leave, please? Well, he hated to see him go, but he agreed. He gave him the money he owed him and the kid rode off. That night, about sundown, Cowboys were all sitting around the campfire. They were singing and whittling and such. And kind of out of the corner of his eye, Mr. Houston thought he saw something off in the distance. As he peered closer, he could see it was a lady walking right out towards them. She just kept on a walking and when she was within about 50 feet or so of the camp, Mr. Houston stood to his feet. She kept on walking towards them. The other cowboys could see him staring at something and nobody could even breathe. Well, she walked right up to Mr. Houston and she began to laugh and she said, Mr. Houston, you don't know me, do you? Well, you could have heard a pin drop. Everyone was silent for almost a whole minute. Then she reached out and shook his hand and he said, 
kid, could it be that you're a lady? Well, at that point, all the cowboys looked at each other in shock and they began to rehearse all the things that had gone, ha happened on the drive the four months prior, worried that maybe they'd said or done something inappropriate in the presence of a lady. Then they all just kind of laughed and one of the cowboys pulled up a seat for her to sit on and she sat down and Mr. Houston looked her square in the eye and said, now I need you to explain yourself. And so she did. She said, my papa went on the cattle drives as a young man and he went to Caldwell, Kansas on one of those trips and just decided he'd stay. He met my mama and they got married and my brother and I came along and well, I just grew up listening to Papa tell the stories of life on the trail and I knew that someday I wanted to go on the trail myself even if it meant running away from home. So I'd been reading in the papers about the cattle drives going through Clay Clayton, New Mexico. Now that wasn't too far from where I lived. So one day my brother and I were out riding amongst the cattle and I told him, I'm gonna ride off in the country and I'm gonna be gone for a while, maybe a week. Just tell Papa that I'll be back. I happened to have on a pair of his clothes and of some of his boots. Well, I rode into Clayton a few days later and well, I found myself a job. And Mr. Houston, I am glad that I found that job with you because I have enjoyed every minute of it but I have got to get on that 11 o'clock train tonight. That thing can't get me home fast enough. Well, whether you figured it out or not, I am Willie Matthews, the lady who dressed like a cowboy in the story. That adventure was more memorable and enjoyable than any other time in my life. And well, Mr. Houston, I. I didn't know what to expect. You know, I lived in four months of fear, I guess you could say, that someone might find out my secret. But when Mr. Houston found out, he was just as kind as he always had been. In fact, that very night, he and all the cowboys escorted me up to the train to see me off. But, you know, that was the way it was in those days. For a girl to get to go on the cattle drive and work like a cowboy, she had to dress like a cowboy. No one could know she was a man. And that's the story of Willie Matthews. Well, that is an interesting story. Uh, yeah, it was interesting all right, <laughs> Miss Mary. I can assure you that. I'm sure you got yourself into some sticky situations a time or two. There was a close call more than <laughs> once, that's for sure. Now, you were a female dressed as a boy, yes. correct? Yes, yes. But I have heard tales of other women actually out on the cattle drives. I heard some stories about that, too. I never heard of anyone else dressing up like a man like I did. Mm -hmm. Although I can't believe that nobody else thought of that or had that desire like I did. So surely there were others, but I heard of a lot of wives and sisters and daughters of cattlemen who did go out, go out on, those their, tra on those trails. With their men folk to With the their men folk on That's the trail, right. yeah, exactly, exactly. Yes. Okay, well, I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually talk about a few more. Oh, okay. You wanna stick around for a little bit? Well, sure, if you don't mind. Okay. Well, Miss Borland here. Now, I don't know if you guys can Let's see. see. I, I can Borland. hold that. I can hold it right here where folks can see it. Okay, Miss Borland. Her name was Margaret Borland, and she actually died just a couple of weeks after she completed the trip. I remember her story. Seems like she took her youngins with her. Yep. She pretty um, much just went with her kids I believe and grandkids yeah she surely she had to have some cowboys Cow hands. with her but mm -hmm. I believe her husband had died her husband had already died and, and she had to get those cattle up the trail mm -hmm. and bless her heart I believe she died of what they called trail fever no trail fever I don't I don't think anybody of us around here have trail fever well no, heard of the trail fever. no it's a it's something that folks caught on out out on the trail mm -hmm. I don't know if anybody really knew what it, what it was or how to treat it, but a lot of folks did succumb to that. It was it was, it was a thing. Yeah, yeah, it was. 
Well, but yeah, Miss Borland, she had an interesting life from what I understand. Yeah, she, uh, I think we do have pictures of several of the ones we're going to speak about today, but you can see here that she's in her dress. Mm-hmm. Yep, so she's dressed. She's dressed ladylike. Like a lady. That's why she's even got her gloves on there, it looks like. Yeah, she wasn't trying to hide the fact no. that she was a woman. She was a woman. She was having to do what she had to for her family. Yes. Now, a lot of times folks say women weren't allowed on the trail. And they weren't if they wanted to work and ride like the cowboys did. Right. But if they were going because out of necessity for their own cattle or their husband's cattle, you know, that was a different story. <clears throat> now, Miss Lizzie Johnson. Liz now, we have talked, and I think we've even been visited by Miss Lizzie oh, Johnson. Oh, Lizzie Johnson. She did I, stop by. If I'm not mistaken, she's known as the cattle queen she of Texas. She is the cattle queen of Texas. Now, she was, um, she liked money. She liked to play with money. She liked to keep the books for other cattle uh, ranchers and uh, businessmen. Mm -hmm. So um, she actually married uh, Hezekiah Williams. Mm -hmm. So there it's where you get the Williams part in her name here. Right. And um, she lived around in the Austin area. Did you ever visit the Austin area? Oh, well, um, I was, I was raised up in Kansas. So now, you, my papa was from down there in uh, that part of Texas. Right. So, you know, I'm sure he, he was went probably there. more familiar with that area. Right. Now, the day, the cattle drive days that he went on would have been the same ones that Miss Johnson or Miss Williams, I guess, would have, would have traveled. At the same time. Uh -huh. <clears throat> from what I understand, she died a very wealthy woman. She did. In fact, it says here reports of when she died in 1924. Uh-huh. Okay. She had a fortune of over a quarter of a million dollars at the time. So in today's market value, that would have been well over $3.6 million. My goodness. And she, I think a lot of it was hidden around amongst her in her apartment. Yeah, I heard tales that as she got older, she um, might have slipped a little bit, <laughs> if you know what I mean. A little up top there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, Miss Mary, let's see here. I think actually we have here, we don't have a picture of her, but her name was Arminta Holmesley. Mm. Do you ever heard? They called her Minta. Minta. Minta, yes. Minta. Okay. You heard anything of her? Um, no, not too much. She actually joined her husband and other cattle drivers on the trail and developed a medicine for treating poison oak. Well, see there. Oh, on the trail. If you were riding on the trail, you probably had a lot of time to think mm -hmm. if you weren't, you know, tending to the cattle. So maybe that gave her some fresh air and sunshine right. and opportunity to <laughs> Those think. brain cells started firing. Exactly. Um, Kate Malone Medlin. Kate Medlin. Many bells no, with that one? No, no. She actually took her four children with her on a cattle drive from Hayes County to California. My goodness. Can you imagine carting four children up a trail, cattle trail? No, I can't. Those That's... youngins must have been pretty satisfied to ride in a wagon. Well, well behaved as mm -hmm. well, I can imagine. Mm -hmm. All day, all night in out on the trail. Yes. Uh, Miss Mary Taylor Bunton. No, we got a picture of we her. We do. Her and her husband here. So, do you know of anything of Miss well, Bunton? Well, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, she's from the the Austin Taylors. Okay. Uh, that They were, they were a right? well-to-do family, upper crust, I might say, now, in the city like of Austin, maybe Texas. He's a cowboy? Uh, yes. Assuming so, he's cowboy. Right. She's, she she was upper class. She was educated at finishing schools up north, and so she um, her family was very well to do and well known in the Austin community. But she didn't fall for someone that was like her family. She fell for a cowboy. <laughs> now I think I have here. It says that her mother actually bought her some new britches um, and some boots and caused a stampede right yes she um her mother wanted her to be able to ride her horse appropriately now i was dressed like a man so i rode astride on just a, a saddle with a stirrup on either side mm -hmm. any of the other women in these days would have been riding side saddle or in they, a buggy right or in a buggy because they ought they were required to wear skirts and the petticoats and, and, and the things. petticoats and you couldn't ride a horse on a regular saddle like mm -hmm. that so her mother um sent her some breeches and some tall boots so she could ride 
a saddle like a man. Right. And um, she put all that get up on and she went out and it caused such a stir, the cattle got spooked and ran <laughs> off and it caused a stampede. Can you so imagine? She, yeah, she had to hightail it back to the house and get her skirt back on. Can you imagine putting something on and that's enough to cause a stampede? No, I have a feeling the cowboys laughing They've real hard might have added had a to little that. extra. Yes, right. yes. Exactly. All right. Let's see here. I believe next up we have, now this is a long name, so we have Lucinda Elizabeth Matthew Reynolds. Mm. She was well known to her family, though, as Betty. Okay. She um, and her husband, George Reynolds, and um, they actually went along the Goodnight Loving Trail to sell their cattle in New Mexico. Uh-huh. But they sold their cattle for such a good profit that they actually spent the next year of their life living it up in the San Francisco area. You know, now working as a cow hand like I did, the money was meager. I didn't mind because I wanted to do it, but a mm -hmm. dollar a day was the Not going much. wage. If you owned some cattle and you could sell them at the right time, that market went up mm -hmm. and down during those days of the cattle drives. It but if right. you hit it right, it paid off big time, just like Miss Betty did. there. Yeah, yeah, they did. Now we have here Miss Amanda Knight Burks. Mm. Now, this is kind of a um, love story, if you would. Okay. Now they were, her and her husband here, Franklin, which mm -hmm. are, is pictured here with her in the photograph, they were newlyweds and they could not stand to be apart for so long. Well, that's a sweet story. Isn't so it? he was just a few miles down the road and turn, or called for her after just a few miles down for her to come join them. Is that right? So he, she did, and um, you know, she was actually one that while they were out on the trail, the cowboys that were there on the trail with them, they were very, very fond of her, even though she started a prairie fire once by accident. Well, you know, I heard about some women were more trouble than it was worth, it seemed. Uh -huh. But others were like Miss Burks here, and they got on the good side of the cowboys, mm -hmm. so starting a fire out on the prairie could be overlooked, I right. suppose. Right. You know, if you made friends, there's probably a life lesson to be learned right there. <laughs> there probably is. Now, even though she did travel with them and whatnot, she actually had what you, they are calling here as servants that cooked for her and ah. would actually put up her tent for her every mm -hmm. night. So she was out on the trail, but she she didn't quite rough it mm -hmm. all the way she right. kind of she did some glamping right her her life on the trail and my life on the trail would probably have been two pretty opposite different, two way different ends of the spectrum exactly I yeah all right now um we have another one that we do not have a picture of oh, actually, i'm actually going to show you this picture here miss hattie cluck ah miss cluck miss cluck she reminds me of a school teacher. She's got mm. that school teacher kind of look to mm -hmm. her. Now, she is actually believed to be the first woman to travel up the Chisholm Trip. Aha. Uh -huh. But she did ride in a wagon, and she had her two younger children with her. Um, she was a true cowgirl and the Chisholm Trail pioneer, is what they have her labeled as. And actually, in 1938, she died at her daughter's home around Waco, Texas, which isn't too far from here. People right. might be familiar with Waco. Right. And in the little um, close community called Round Rock, mm -hmm. Texas, in 2003, they actually in dedicated a sculpture of her in a park. I believe Round Rock is, is part of the Chisholm Trail. Mm -hmm. It is. If I'm not mistaken. It is. I think that that's a land a of, marker. That is. Uh -huh. And I think now we've got to our last and final one that we have here. Okay. If I do believe so. Miss Molly Goodnight. Molly now, Goodnight. That, that name, name, that name uh, has a lot to do with the Chisholm Trail and cattle, the cattle drives. drives. In general. Mm -hmm. Yes, her husband was Charles, mm -hmm. which he was actually the developer of the chuck wagon, the chuck wagon like you see here behind us. Right. So yes, he added this um, section on the end here, I believe, for easier. Yeah, this make sure everybody can see it. That part right back there. So the cook would have a place to... His little kitchen. Yeah, right. Do like his serving. work, his serving mm -hmm. and all of that. That's right. Um, now, she was earned her reputation as being the mother of the panhandle. And that was for her kindness and charitable works. 
She also helped to establish what is now known as the um, J.A. Ranch. The J.A. Ranch. Mm -hmm. That's a well-known ranch. I believe that's out by Paladura mm -hmm. Canyon mm -hmm. in Texas. That's right. Yep. yep. They, uh, they had a large, sprawling ranch and um, just one of those families that contributed so much to the Chisholm Trail. Mm -hmm. All right. That's a lot of females that, that you may or may not have yes, heard about. Yes, it is. A lot um, of information. Well, I just wonder if anyone has any questions for us today. If you guys do have your, any questions, we'll do our best to answer them. Um, you can type it in the chat box. You can unmute yourself. If you have a question, we'll be happy to answer that. Miss Matthews here might be able to answer any questions you might have. If you were here, she could sign autographs. Right. I have a big X I put on yeah. stuff. You guys are always <laughs> Actually, welcome to come I learned, in. I did learn how to read and write. That's how I read about the cattle drives in the mm -hmm. newspaper. You know, after I left the cattle drive, I wrote Mr. Houston a number of letters thanking him for his kindness and um, inviting him to come visit our family. My papa even wrote him letters thanking him for allowing mm -hmm. me such a great adventure and taking such good care of me. I bet he really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I bet he did. He was a nice man. Everybody would have liked him. Mm -hmm. So, right here at this um, place, this fancy place y'all have. I bet you've uh, never been to a fancy place I like this. I have not been to a fancy place like this. Um, do I? Did I see um, art and things like that around here? Oh, we have all kinds of art. We do. We have an extensive art collection. It's actually called the Garris Gallery uh -huh. of the American West. Um, it's an extensive uh, collection of cowboy, western, Native American art. Oh, very nice. It is. Yes, it's one of the largest, actually, between Oklahoma City, Dallas area. Uh -huh. So we're very proud of that, that we have it here at the Chisholm Trail Heritage Center. I saw something in that room over there that looked like it was telling the story of the Chisholm that Trail. That is something we're very honored to have right now. That is a, um exhibit done by Mr. Jim Weaver. Oh. And he actually spent a lot of time researching the history of the Chisholm Trail, the Chisholm Trail in general. And there is a piece in there that he did specifically for the Chisholm Trail and for the museum. And it actually, it's kind of a timeline. And so it depicts the travels of the cattle and the cowboys up the Chisholm Trail. And you guys are welcome to come and see that. You ought to right. take a look I, at that before you leave here today. I'd wager Mr. Weaver's a pretty talented fellow to is. create something like that. His work is amazing. It's a masterpiece for sure. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. It is. So you guys... You can take a look at it before you leave here today. And, and we are actually open Tuesday through Saturday from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. So you guys feel free to come on in, take a look at it for yourself. Yeah. Well, that sounds real nice, Miss Mary. Mm -hmm. I sure appreciate you having me on today. Well, I'm glad you you uh, you found time. Yeah, well, I like reminiscing about the days on the trail. <laughs> Always brings a smile to me. Yeah. Part. Yeah, yeah. That was some good good days. Brought back some good memories. Yes, I'm sure. it did. I'm sure it, it did. did. Yep. Um, did anybody have any questions for myself or Miss Matthews here before we sign off? And while you guys are thinking of your questions, we want to make sure and guys uh, let you know that Robert Peterson is going to be here tomorrow at two o'clock for our Trail Talk Zoom series. He is an artist going to be a really incredible time if you guys enjoy art like we said so be sure and tune in here on facebook live or on zoom if you are on zoom right now following the links like you did today we of course will have a new password and id up for you guys tomorrow well i might have to mosey back over and see if i can catch some of that you need to i do i bet we might see you tomorrow you might do it we can keep you around here sure shooting <laughs> All right, no I questions. Wondering, I was wondering if you could hear me. This is Jim. Hi, well, looky there. Howdy there, Jim. That's Mr. Jim Thanks. right there. How you doing? Good. Thanks for the kind words about the artwork. Um, <laughs> you got your friend there with you. Who is a coyote model. <laughs> oh, that's a handsome critter yeah. right there. <laughs> so she's, um, she's in the Chisholm Trail um, commemoration piece somewhere that... Uh, 
couple of you have seen her in there. So she was a model for one of the coyotes. And then uh, to all of us promote the Trail Drivers of Texas book. Oh. A lot of my research came from Amanda Burks wrote a story that's in here. So you can read more about her. Right. We have her. So, um, probably a different version of uh, the story of um, Willie Matthews is also in here. Oh, oh, very interesting. And I believe we this saw is that. Really, this is a really great reference. As, as, as I said before, there's uh, about 100, <coughs> excuse me, 150 first-hand account of the trail drivers. And Amanda Burks wrote one. And so her story in her own words is in here. Well, we might just have to see if we couldn't find Miss Amanda Burks and have her come visit here sometime. Track her down. Mm -hmm. Find her out mm -hmm. there. That's somehow a, that's a good word there mr weaver thank you mr weaver thank you. all right anything else now are you going to stick around and sign off with us we have this say uh, uh, sign off that we do oh yeah what's that well you may have said it while you were out on the trail but we unmute everybody and we count down and then we all say happy trails together well, that sounds like a Would right like good to time, Miss Mary. Us? I'd love to do that. All right. So what we'll do now is we're going to sign off. And until we see you guys tomorrow here at 2 o'clock. So if you guys will unmute yourselves. And one, two, three. Happy, Happy trails. trails. Happy trails.